Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is Thursday at nine o'clock, which means it's time for a Magic Stuff. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about probably one of the most important topics that you need to understand and master as a close-up magician, which is the approach. Now, what do I mean by the approach? Well, I'm talking about how you actually approach a group of people when you're about to start performing, because here's the thing, right? A lot of magicians, especially people that are new into magic and, and, and people that haven't really done much performing in the real world, so to speak, um, they, they focus on the magic, which makes sense because obviously we're magicians. So you focus on the tricks and you think about openers and you think about what I'm going to put in the middle and what I'm going to put in uh, as a closing routine. And that's all great and that's all well and good. But the most important thing to think about when you're actually out gigging and being paid, from, uh, paid to go and perform is the approach. How do you approach the audience? How do you approach the group of people that you're going to perform for and get them to want to listen to you? Because you could do the most amazing trick in the world, but if you don't grab their attention immediately, they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to want to watch what you have to say. And so this is something that people need to master and it's something that a lot of magicians forget about. And I've been to gigs and I've watched magicians and they'll, they'll very meekly go up to a group of people and tap somebody on the shoulder and say, hi, I'm the magician. And it's just cringy to watch because that group of people doesn't want you there. Um, they, 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 they are trying very politely to get you to go away. And, and it's just cringy to watch. You need to be in a situation where you've mastered your opening approach. And it's why I've said on this channel over and over again, the best book that a magician can buy and study and learn is a book like How to Win Friends and Influence People. Because what you have to master as a magician is you have to master the ability, especially as a close-up magician, you have to master the ability to go up to a group of people and within a couple of seconds, get them to forget about what they were saying to each other and immediately listen to what you've got to say. And if you can't do that, then you're not going to last very long as a close-up magician because if you're constantly getting told, oh, no, we're all mate, mate. No, thanks, we're okay, mate. You know what? Way back in the day, like I'm talking years and years and years ago, I had a restaurant residency <coughs> in a place and I couldn't do it for a month. So I got a friend to do it for me for a month. I was like, look, uh, all you have to do is go in. I'll invoice them. I'll pay you. You don't have to worry about a thing. You just need to go in and do your thing. Three hours. Okay, cool. Brilliant. Oh, man. <laughs> At the end of the month, I'd lost the residency. And I asked them why, and they said, well, you know, we just, the guy never did anything. And what do you mean the guy never did anything? Well, he used to walk up to tables and he didn't do any magic and they'd just walk off. And we'd ask the customers if they'd seen some magic and they'd say no. And it's because his approach was so terrible. He was, he was kind of approaching them like he was scared to even be there. And, and, and not like he was going to be entertaining them or impressing them or, 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 or giving them experience they'll remember. He was approaching them like a timid little wallflower and they were sending him on his way. Oh, no, we're busy, mate. Thanks. We're deep in conversation. We're busy, mate. When in fact, if you actually went and you approached that table correctly, then he would have actually ended up smashing every single table because he was a good magician. But by the by, what this video is going to hopefully go through are some things that I think that you need to think of when considering your approach. And this is, this is going to be useful information for everybody who's watching this. If you're new to magic and you aspire to becoming a professional magician, this is something you absolutely need to nail before you go out and do your first gig. And if you've been in magic for a while and maybe you struggle with the approach, have you ever, we all do. I mean, there's some tables or uh, groups that are absolutely amazing. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's David Blaine star reactions. It's not those people that we're going through this whole process for. We're going through the uh, we're going through this whole process for the groups of people that are kind of on the fence. They're a little bit unsure. They're deep in conversation. Maybe they're at a wedding. They haven't seen each other for a while and they don't want to get interrupted. You have to give them a reason to be interrupted. And that's what this video is going to be all about. I'm going to give you some actionable points that you can actually use to hopefully improve your approach at a close-up gig. So the first thing we're going to be looking at right now is we're going to be talking about the environment in which you are performing. The environment in which you're performing. And really, in my mind, 
there's three different types of environments where you have to consider the approach. Now, the first environment, and the one that most magicians will tend to perform in, is a walk-around environment. It might be drinks reception at a corporate event. It might be during the photos, during a wedding. It might be a family barbecue outside. Whatever it is, there's people milling around and you're having to go up to people. There's not really any seats, everyone's standing up, probably holding a drink, and you've got to go up and you've got to kind of grab their attention and impress them. That's the one performing environment. The second performing environment is a restaurant or a restaurant style place where you've got lots of tables and people are sitting down at their individual tables and they're perform and they're they're eating a meal they might and again you also need to consider what type of restaurant it is is it a family restaurant are there kids there is it more of an upscale restaurant uh, or, or is it a bar it might be a bar or a nightclub or somewhere like that all these factors matter but a restaurant style environment where people are sitting down at a table and, and eating uh, and they might be having a course, maybe two courses, maybe even three courses. The third environment are corporate sort of big banquet tables. Not just corporates, but you get these weddings as well. You get these in quite a few places. But uh, when, you, when you're going into a, an environment where there's a table of 10 people, uh, or eight people or seven people, however many people are sitting around this table, sometimes you have really long tables with like 15, 20 people on them. Um, you have to be able to approach that table as well. Uh, and, and you get these quite a lot. This is a performing environment that once you actually start going out as a gigging magician, this is an environment that you'll actually experience quite a lot. So it's really important to understand the environment in which you're performing in because you will approach each one of these in a different way. And we'll talk about this as we go further into the video, but you approach each of these performing environments in a different way. Um, and, and for example, with a, with a restaurant, for example, there's lots of different things that you can put on the table or there's lots of different things that you can do with the staff that can maybe inform the diners in the restaurant that there's actually going to be a magician there. So you're not walking up completely cold. They're expecting you to be there. You can't really get that in a walk around gig or in a sort of big banquet corporate style gig. So first of all, understand the environment in which you're performing. And if you're performing in that environment for the first time, you really kind of need to think about this beforehand. Okay, number two. Once you understand that there's lots of different performing environments, the next thing that you need to understand is there's lots of different types of people as well. Um, and again, this is really tied into the performing environments. So if you think about a wedding, um, or let's take a restaurant first of all. If you think about a restaurant, in a family restaurant, you're going to have kids and you've probably been hired by the restaurant to entertain families. So you need to make sure that you engage the children as well as the adults. So your 18 phase ambitious card routine or your 36 phase gambling demonstration probably isn't going to work in that environment. Uh, but you need to you need to remember. Uh, and let's say we talked about a higher up market sort of restaurant. If you're in a higher up market restaurant, again, you're probably going to be in a situation where you've got smaller tables. You also need to consider the fact that there's going to be staff walking around. You need to consider all of this environment. So you need to consider the type of people that you're performing to. Normally in a restaurant, they're really welcoming. They really want you to go over and perform to them. They, they, they probably are aware that there's going to be a magician there that night. And uh, they've probably been told about it by the wait staff and they're super excited. But you need to bear that in mind when you're thinking about your approach. It's the same with a corporate event. If you're at a corporate event, normally you're going to have, uh, well, not normally, but there's a higher percentage chance that you're going to have that table with an alpha male. That guy that's just kind of like, doesn't like the fact that you're coming over and stealing his spotlight and he wants to be the star of the show. He's the wisecracking funny guy and you're coming in and he's not going to let you take his spotlight. So he'll very, very quickly get defensive and start, uh, I want to say picking on you, but he'll start firing jokes at you uh, and mild insults to probably, you know, put you in your place, so to speak. Uh, you need to be aware that in this sort of environment, you're probably going to have an alpha male at some point, especially if you're performing in places like RAF bases or military bases, or as I say, corporate events where the drink has been flowing. And that's the other thing you need to be considering as well. Um, when you're performing in sort of a banquet style situation, they've probably been 
been having pre-drinks in the bar. Then they were probably having drinks in the drinks reception and they probably had a couple of glasses of champagne. And now, depending on when you're going over to them through the meal, they've probably had a few glasses of wine or a few pints of beer or something like that. So they might be a little bit drunk. They might be a little bit uh, pissed. And if that's the situation, if that's the case, it's going to be more of a challenge to go up to them and grab their attention because of, of the level of alcohol they've, they've had. And you have to be more on your game, if that kind of makes sense. And this is all stuff that you really need to consider um, when you're thinking about your approach. When are you going over to them? If you are working, for example, a corporate event where there's a chance that people might be drunk, at what point are you going over to their table? Are you going over at the beginning of the night? Are you going over later? How long are you going to be at the gig? All of this stuff matters. It's all really, really important. So, so understand that there's going to be different types of people at the different gigs that you go to and one approach might work for one group of people, it might not necessarily work for another group of people. So now you've got an understanding of those different environments, you've got an understanding of the fact that there's different types of people in different environments, now we need to start considering the approach. And the first thing that you need to think of is what is your overall goal here, which sounds incredibly stupid, but seriously think it through in your head. What's your goal? Your goal is to go over to every group that you go up to and have them immediately want to start watching your magic, right? That's, that's the goal. You don't want to have people pushing you away or sending you away. You want to go over to every single group and you want to grab their attention and you want to get them wanting to perform for you. So the first thing that you need to consider in this situation is you need to get them to understand that you're not going to be there forever. Because people might not have seen a close-up magician before. They might not know how it works, especially if it's like early on in the night, they've not seen you go around to any other groups of people. Let's take a walk around situation, for example. They might not have seen you go up to any other groups of people. You've just suddenly just appeared and started performing for them. If they've never seen a magician before, it might be a kind of an odd situation for them to kind of take in. So one thing to consider is in your approach, you need to let them know that you're not going to be taking up too much of your time. And there's ways that you can actually do that. Uh, and there's a couple of different ways. So let's talk about Simon Lovell, for example. I remember seeing a Simon Lovell uh, uh, lecture many, many years ago. And Simon talked about the approach. And he said that one thing that he does is uh, he walks up to a group of people and he says, hi, my name's Simon, I'm the magician. Uh, good news, you've won first prize in the, uh, in the competition. Congratulations. Uh, no, you've won second prize, though. That's it. My name's Simon, you've won second prize in the competition. Second prize is one free card trick before dinner. Uh, it could be worse, sir. You could have won first prize. That's five free card tricks before dinner. Now, there's a few things that that does. And we'll get into this as we go through the video. But one thing it does is it tells them you're not going to be there for too long. You basically just said to them, you're going to show them one card trick. And you've also made a joke of the fact that you know, it's kind of like an inside joke. You know that they are thinking, oh my gosh, is this guy going to be here forever? Because you've made the joke. You know, it could be worse. It could be first prize. That's five free card tricks before dinner. Um, that is a great approach because it tells them that you're not going to be there for too long and it's probably made them smile. It might, not, it might have made them laugh as well. Um, so that's the first thing that you need to consider. How, how, how are you going to communicate to that group of people and let them know that you're not going to be there forever? Okay. Now, <clears throat> the next thing to consider is you want, you want to come in with a real kind of like, you don't want to, be, I talked earlier on about being really meek when you approach the group. Hello, hello. I'm Craig, I'm the magician, how are you? You don't want that. You are the entertainer. You should be the life and soul of the party. So you need to go over there and you need to grab the attention of the group immediately. So when I actually approach a group and I'm doing close-up magic, let's say it's mix and mingle, because we'll talk about banquet tables in a bit. When I do mix and mingle, I walk over and I go, hello there, how are you doing? Hello. And I just literally come in, I insert myself into the group, I go, hi there guys, how's it going? Are you having a good evening? And immediately I've asked them a question. Hi there guys, how's it going? You having a good evening? You okay? Now all of a sudden, I've come in and I've taken charge of this whole conversation. 
Now, the important thing is not to talk over somebody. If somebody's in the middle of a monologue or a conversation, you don't want to just immediately just shut them off and start talking. So I kind of walk over, I grab eye contact, and as soon as the person who's talking looks over to me, I go, hello there, sir, hello, hi, how's it going? You having a good evening? Is everything okay? Now, at this point, they might think you're a waiter or something like that, the way that you've gone over there. But what it does is it stops the conversation dead and it gets them to turn around and it gets them to look at you. Now, my personal approach when I'm doing walk around magic is I inject a little bit of humor into it. So the first thing I'll say is I'll say, hey there, guys, I'm not as dodgy as I look, honestly. Uh, and I'll do a smile. I'll, I'll just say, hey, guys, I'm not as dodgy as I look. Now, that's a funny line for me, because when I'm walking up to people and I'm performing at a gig, uh, I've got a suit on, I've probably got a shirt and a, a tie, maybe, but I've got a shaved head, I've got tattoos, I'm a big guy. So for me to turn around and go, I'm not as dodgy as I look, they find that that, that never fails but to get people to laugh, because they're probably thinking, my God, this guy looks dodgy. So I just walk over, hey, how's it going? Hi, how you doing? Hello. And I'll try to get eye contact, by the way, with as many people as possible when I walk over. So if there's five or six people in the group, I'll try and get eye contact with everyone. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? Are you okay? Hi, my name's Craig. I'm not as dodgy as I look, honestly. And I'll smile. They'll normally laugh at that point. And then what I'll say is I'll say, um, it's, it's my job to come over and show some magic for you. Now, that sentence is incredibly important. Or what happens with that sentence, the reasoning behind that sentence. It's my job to come over and show people some magic. Now, I phrase the sentence differently depending. But what I'm doing here is I'm telling them that this is my job. I'm not just some weirdo off the street that's decided to walk in and decide to just randomly interrupt people. And I've also told them what I'm doing. It's my job to show people magic. In one sentence, I've told them that I'm paid to be there and um, that I'm a magician, right? Now, the, an even better way of doing this, which I'll do an awful lot, is by name dropping the clients. So if I'm at a wedding, for example, I'll turn around and I'll say, hey, how's it going? Hey, my name's Craig. How you doing? I'm not as dodgy as I look. Uh, yeah, Carol and Alan have asked me to come over and do some magic for you guys. I'm the magician. Now I've turned around and I've said, well, the bride and groom have told me to come around and do some magic for you guys. So now all of a sudden, how are they going to say no? And it's very difficult for them to say no, because I've told them that the bride and groom who have invited them to this event have paid for me to be there to show them magic. And you can do that with anything. So you can do that with the restaurants. Hey, guys, I'm not as dodgy as I look, honestly. Uh, my name's Craig. I've been hired by the restaurant to come over and show you guys some magic. Free entertainment. How exciting is that? Uh, it works the same with the corporate event. Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm not as dodgy as I look. Stacey in HR has asked me to come around and show everyone magic. Or, or Dave, the, the MD, he's asked me to come over and show everyone magic tricks. Well, all of a sudden, he's been there. I'm telling them that their boss has hired me to come over and do magic for them. It's very difficult for them to say no, especially as I've, took, I've got eye contact with them and I've already made them laugh. So that whole thing just takes a few seconds, but it's, hey, hey there, guys. Hey, how's it going? Hey, I'm not as dodgy as I want to look. My name's Craig. Uh, I've been uh, asked by um, the MD to come over and do some magic for you guys. Now, before anybody says anything, I will then immediately just pause. And then after a pause... I will get direct eye contact with the grumpiest looking person in the group. Other than one situation, which I'll get to in a minute. Normally, when I've said that monologue, everybody will kind of look at each other or they might look at me. They're not really too sure what to say. I'll look for the grumpiest guy. It's fairly easy to pick up the grumpiest guy uh, or the person that's kind of not getting eye contact with me, that's looking away. I'll pick on that person. Not pick on them, but I'll go, you look very excited about this, sir. And... That will immediately get everyone to laugh because I, it's everybody knows. I always pick the right person and everybody knows that that's the person that's probably going to be negative about this whole thing. And I've just immediately said, you look very excited about this. So that whole thing is, hey there, guys, sorry to bother you. I'm not as dodgy as I look, honestly. Uh, my name's Craig. Uh, I'm the magician. I've been asked by the MD to come over and do some magic for you guys. Uh, you look very excited about this, sir. Mm -hmm. Laugh, immediate laugh. Um, now, the only way that that changes 
is if somebody is over the top excited. You go to those groups and there's somebody that's like, oh, a magician, oh, that's wonderful. Um, in which case, instead of picking on the guy that looks the grumpiest, I, 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 I will literally just turn around and say, well, well, thanks for the confidence, but uh, you know, if your expectations are here, drop them to be here and I think that we're gonna be great. Or you, you look way too excited for this, I've seen the act, it's okay, but you need to dial it down a bit. Whatever it may be, uh, you need to throw a line in for that particular person. But that whole thing takes about 10 or 11 seconds. And by the end of it, I've got them on side. They've stopped having whatever conversation they've had and I've got them on side. So the whole thing, hey, hey guys, I'm not as dodgy as I look. My name's Craig, I'm the magician here this evening. I've been asked by the MD to come over and show you guys magic tricks. You look very excited about this, so I can see that. Now notice the other thing. Notice uh, there's, there's a couple of things going on here. First of all, tone of voice. My tone of voice, I'm projecting my voice. I'm not shouting, I'm projecting my voice, and I'm doing it in a kind of, uh, there's inflections in my voice. I'm not just monotone. So it's not this, hi there guys, my name's Craig, I'm the magician here. I I'm gonna do some magic. Now, the MD have asked me to come over and do some magic for you. You look very excited, sir. It's not like that, you can tell I'm excited. Um, I'm, 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 I'm putting across this whole excited uh, kind of persona and my voice, I'm projecting it and there's lots of uh, highs and lows in the voice because the thing is if I, if I go up and down in tonality, people are going to be more inclined to listen to what I say. I sound more interesting. Hey guys, sorry to bother you, I'm not as todgy as I look honestly. My name's Craig. I've been asked by the MD to come over and do some magic for you. You right there, sir. You look very excited about this, I can tell, yeah? Now, the other thing, as well as the tone of voice, um, I, <laughs> I call this, this comes back from my sales background. I've got a background in sales, and this whole thing comes from a sales background. Uh, I always said to my salespeople when I was training them, make sure you have sex with every single customer you speak to. And it's the same here. Make sure you have sex with every single person that you speak to when you're performing magic. And by sex, it's an acronym. I mean smile, eye contact, and excitement. It's basic sales technique. So you're smiling all of the time. It's very difficult to not sound excited when you're smiling. When you're smiling, it's very difficult. It's really almost impossible. If you're smiling, first of all, a smile is infectious. So if you're smiling, they're probably gonna be smiling back to you as well. But the other thing is a smile will help you become more excited. So smile, uh, the, which is the S, the E stands for eye contact. You want to look people directly in the eyes. I've seen people approach a group and they kind of look down like this. Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the magician. Um, I want to show you some magic tricks. They don't get eye contact at all. You need to have eye contact with every single person there. Uh, and then the X stands for excitement, obviously. You wanna be super excited. You wanna be majorly excited. In sales, we always say to people, if you're not excited about the product you're selling, how are you gonna get them excited about it as well? But it's the same with magic performance. If you're not excited about your, uh, the fact that you're there to do magic, how are they expected to be excited about it as well? They're not, right? So uh, the smiling, eye contact, excitement, all of this stuff is very, very important. Tonality and vocal projection and making sure there's inflections in the way that you speak and that you're coming across excited. That's also very important. And also notice that I'm nodding an awful lot as well. Uh, it, this is another sales technique. If you are kind of subtly nodding at people, it's kind of almost like a yes role. You're getting them to kind of agree with you as well. So that whole thing put together. Hey there guys, how's it going? I'm not as dodgy as I look, honestly. Uh, my name's Craig. I've been invited by the, uh, by the bride and groom to come over and do some magic for you today. Uh, you right there, sir. You look very excited about this. I can tell you. You're the fun. My, uh, you're the fun person in the group, aren't you? Wonderful. Should we do a quick trick? And I just finish it off like that. I finish it like a, like a question, but it's not a question I'm expecting an answer for. I kind of finish it as, should we do a quick trick? And before anyone has a chance to answer, I'm, I'm, I'm into my first trick, whatever that may be. There's other videos that I've done on this channel about opening effects. I'm not going to get into that. But that is how to approach a group when doing walk around magic. It's that simple. It's not difficult. 
Hey there guys, not as dodgy as I look. Uh, my name's Craig, I've been through it. You, that's how you want to approach a group. I guarantee you that once you've done that, they will be stopped dead, their conversation will be over, they'll be listening to every word that you've got to say. Uh, there's lots of other ways of approaching a group in Walk Around, as I talked about. Simon Lovell has got a great way. We can discuss some of these later on in the video. But that is the way that I do it. That is the way that I've always approached a group of people. And it always, absolutely always gets them on my side immediately. Right, the next thing to consider is approaching, how do you approach a big table? How do you approach a big table? So uh, you've got a table of 10 people. There might be noise levels that you need to consider because there's lots of other tables and they're all talking loudly. There might be a DJ playing background music, whatever it may be. How do you go over to that table and approach that table and get them on your side? Well, it's a very similar approach, but the big mistake that I see a lot of magicians make is they walk over to a table and let's say it's a table of 10 they perform for the two or three people in front of them. So they'll walk over to the table and they'll just be the performing to the person to the left and to the right of them, which in my mind is an absolute big no. If, you're, if you've got 10 tables, 10 people on each table, you've got 100 people all together, and your client has booked you to entertain everybody during a dinner for two hours, you'll want to try and make it around every table. Now you can do that in two hours. You can probably do 15 tables in two hours. But if you're only performing for two people or three people and there's 10 people on the table, you're gonna to have to do a performance then to the other side of the table and the other side of the table. There's no way you're gonna get around everybody. I kind of think of doing a table as a mini cabaret show because I have to grab everybody's attention. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, you want to walk over to the table and you're going to find that a lot of the time the chairs are kind of positioned quite close to each other. So I walk over to the table, I pick a good place. And what I mean by a good place is I don't want people walking by me or to the side of me. So I try to pick a place where I'm not going to get interrupted. Uh, and I also look uh, for who I think looks kind of excited and I'm going to have those people near me. And I'll walk directly up to the table. Now the approach is very similar but I look directly at the person on the other side of the table and I go, hello. And, and it's a bigger thing than when I'm doing walk around magic. And I use my arms. I'm like, hello there, guys. How's it going? And I'll go around the table, get an eye contact like I did in walk around. But I'll go around the table. Hey, how's it going? Hello there, sir. How's it going? Nice hat. Liking the hat over there, sir. It's very good. Very fetching. I can't pull off a hat like that. You look amazing. So you've got very similar glasses to me. How's it going, sir? You okay? You having a good night? Fantastic. Hey, everybody. So you're probably wondering who I am. Uh, my name's Craig. I'm the magician here today. Uh, I've been asked by the, uh, by the MD to come over and do some magic for you. And you are my first table this evening. You look very excited about this, especially you right there, sir. You look very excited. So the, the opening is very similar, in the, but I'm just projecting it bigger, making it bigger, if that kind of makes sense. I want to have everybody on that table looking at me. I don't want to have these guys over here deep in conversation. And, and I'm not getting into trick selection right now, but it's one of the reasons why when you're doing big tables, you want to do tricks that involve everybody around the table because you want to try and keep their attention. And the way to do that is to get them involved in the trick. Um, one thing that I will do is I want to get as close to the table as possible. And obviously you're going to have chairs, right? Where people are here and here and it's going to be difficult. So a lot of the time when I've done that and I've got their attention, I'll go, can you go that way a little bit for me? Can you go that way? That way uh, everybody can see me. Okay, fantastic. And I'll just have them move slightly uh, and, and I'll just slot in between them. The, so it's very, very similar. It's very similar, to be perfectly honest, the approach to a big table. Uh, the way that it will differ is if you're doing a gig where you're doing walk around beforehand and then you're doing banquet tables later on. Because in that environment, you might have already performed for the people that are on the tables. You don't know. If you're at an event where there's 200 people, you might forget everybody that you've performed for. You might go up to a table and not know if you performed for them or not. I know I do. So in that situation, I'll walk up and I'll go, hey, guys, how's it going? Did anybody see me earlier on when I was doing walk around? And you didn't. No way. I can't believe you missed me. Well, my name's Craig. I'm the magician here. I've been hired by the MD to come around and do some magic for you. Or, hey, guys, 
Uh, my name's Craig. How's it all going? Did anybody see me do magic? Put your hand in the air if you saw me do magic earlier. You did. It was just you, sir. Wonderful. Did you enjoy it? You did. There you go. I've already got a recommendation for the rest of you. Um, do, do you see what I mean? You kind of just play with it depending on the answers that you get. Ad-libbing is very, very important. That's, that's just vital uh, is all I can say. So ad-libbing is very, very important. Um, restaurants, similar sort of thing to, it's kind of a halfway house between walk around and between banquet tables. The one thing I'll say with restaurants is a lot of the time they might be aware of you coming over and one thing I used to do when I worked restaurants a lot is I used to have like table tents so I used to print off on my own dime table tents and when I went to the gig um, I would just spend four minutes so I'd get there a little bit earlier and I'd just drop these things on every single table and uh, it just went on it just said on there uh, your entertainer tonight uh, is Craig Petty magician extraordinaire and a picture of myself and uh, and then on the back, it had my contact details or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, but I used to have these things and I used to drop them on every single table so that people knew that I was coming over. Uh, and I used to use that as a selling point to the management of the restaurant. And I'd say to them, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to supply you with these little table talkers so you can drop them on the table. And if restaurants wanted to keep them and have them up there the whole time, I'd supply them because that means that my contact details are on the are on the tables all through the week. So if I'm on there once a week, they're seeing my details constantly. And it used to, the restaurants that did that, there used to be more people coming in on the nights that I was in because they've probably seen the advertisement on the table earlier on at the point where they came in earlier. So um, yeah, you can, you can put these little table talkers out or you can have like a poster that you give them saying, hey, appearing here on, or there's a lot of different ways of doing it. But a restaurant is quite nice as well because there's normally a lot of turnaround. You, the one thing you want to consider is occasionally you are going to get at a restaurant, people just saying no, and it's not because they're not interested. They might be deep in conversation. I'll never forget a time when uh, a friend of mine, and we're going way back now, she used to work at Blockbuster Video, so you can see how far back I'm going. Anyway, a friend of mine uh, who knew I was a magician I went into Blockbuster to see her and she said, oh, I've just had a horrible experience the other night. I was like, what's up? She went, well, I went into this restaurant. She told me the restaurant. I knew the magician that did that uh, restaurant. And she said, yeah, I was, uh, I was taking my boyfriend in because I was dumping him. I was like, oh, right. And he walked over to the table and started doing magic for me. And uh, he just wouldn't leave. He was doing magic and it was really difficult to get rid of him. And I eventually had to tell him to go. And, and he came over to start performing magic literally just before she dumped him. She'd gone through the whole spiel. He knew it was coming. He knew it was coming, but she didn't get a chance to say the actual words. And then the magician blunders in and goes, hi, and starts doing magic. And it was a really awkward situation for them. Um, I, I think the magician might have been oblivious to it. Um, so with restaurants, you do need to consider that people might be having business meetings. You need to consider that people might be uh, deep in conversation. They might be having a quarrel or a row or something like that. All that stuff is important to consider. Um, but normally there's a huge turnaround. So, you know, one table will go and another table will come in immediately. So you're never short, as long as you're working in a busy restaurant, you're never short of a table to go up to. Um, so even if one or two tables say, no, thanks, mate, it doesn't matter because there are other tables that you can immediately jump on. So I've told you the approaches that work for me um, and, and they do work. You know, these are the approaches that I've been using for the, the best part of 30 years. Uh, there are many other ways of approaching tables. One thing that you want to consider is it's important that you know your character uh, when you go over to the table. Uh, that's really important because the way you approach the table, I'm kind of loud and in charge when I perform anyway. So me taking control of the conversation, that works for me. But make sure you're true to your character, uh, else it's going to look a little bit weird. Uh, and then the other thing is don't forget to look around. At, there's lots of other approaches. As I say, the approach that works for me is the one I've outlined for you. Simon Lovell's approach that I talked about earlier, that's absolutely fantastic. That's really good. Um, I love that. Uh, Gary Jones has got an interesting way of approaching people. Uh, if you've ever seen, he's got a trick which looks like a notepad. 
uh, and it turns into a deck of cards. So he'll walk up to people and, uh, you know, this is just one of his many approaches, but he'll walk up to people and he'll say, hey, hey guys, uh, my name's Gary. Did anybody want to order a drink? Um, and they'll start saying something and he'll go, well, I don't even know why I'm asking this. I'm not the, uh, I'm not the waiter, I'm the magician. And he'll literally turn the notepad into a deck of cards and he'll go and say, who would like to see a trick? Well, that's a really cool way of doing it. Uh, it. It doesn't work for me because I like to establish who I am before I start performing the magic, but it's a, it's a really great way to do it. Um, the old style way of approaching tables, I've still, and groups, I've seen people do this to this day, uh, even though it's kind of like an old school type thing and it still works to this day, uh, which is, uh, you know, they used to do it with a pen knife, didn't you? You know, you used to go down, walk over to people and say, has anybody, uh, has anybody um, dropped this black pen knife? No, well, how about this white pen knife? No, how about this red pen knife? No, okay, well, they'll just make that disappear. Hey guys, I'm the magician. Um, you know, that that is a way to do it. I wouldn't do that personally. Um, I think that's a little bit kind of like, what, what who, who, who's this guy? What, what, what's going on? Is he a magician? Things are weird, things are happening. I think he's a magician. Is he a magician? I'm pretty sure this guy, Doris, is that guy a magician? I'm pretty sure he's a magician. So for me, it doesn't really work for me, but it's a valid technique. I've seen people do it. I can't say I've seen people do it and it really works effectively, but I've seen people do it. The point I'm trying to make is there's lots of different ways of actually approaching groups. There's lots of different ways. Just because I've outlined to you one way of doing it, which is my way of doing it, the best thing to do is to actually think through a few of your own ideas and think through of your own ways of doing it as well. Maybe write some lines down and then try them out. The best way to do this isn't just to write it down and then just go to a gig and hope for the best. The best way to do it is to practice it on people, practice it on your, on your family, practice it on your friends and explain what you're doing. You know, you're, the hardest part is the approach to a group. Well, this is what I've worked out. Can you tell me what you think of this? Is this way better or is this way better? Actually practice this stuff. It's important to practice this as much as it is to practice like your next card trick or something. The one last piece of advice I'll give you on the approach is to try not to worry about the tricks. There's lots of other videos on this channel about the opening routine. You don't want to get confused between the approach and the opening routine. Don't beat your audience up with a magic trick before they even know who you are. Just be a person, first of all. Be an interesting person. Read a book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Read books on motivational speaking. Read books on public speaking. Read books on how to grab an audience's attention within two seconds, because that's what you're doing here. You're doing the same thing that a motivational speaker would when they come on stage. And so all the techniques that motivational speakers use, you need to come basically do the same thing, but in a close up environment. So, and, and what you don't want to do is come in with the magic trick hard. So you don't want to walk up to people and go, hey, look, I can solve Rubik's Cube with one hand. I'm the magician, by the way. My name's Craig. Would you like to see some magic? Um, get them to understand who you are, first of all. Make them realize that you're not going to be there for too long. Like I said, right at the very beginning. Make sure that they realize, um, and, and, and you can build that into your approach. Hey, my name's Craig. I want to show you a quick trick or two, or whatever it may be. But make sure that they understand that you're not going to be there for too long that you're trying to go around everybody and, and, and just get them to understand who you are before you start showing them the magic tricks. That's very important. So there you go, guys. That's a video all about the approach. Now, the reason I did this video, I was gonna hold off on this. Let me explain. I was gonna hold off on this and I was gonna do it in a couple of months. A lot of people have been asking for this video for a few months. Um, I think it's something that a lot of people want to understand about and they want to know about. So I made the decision to do it. The reason why I was going to hold off is I wanted to get live performance footage of me approaching different groups. And I've got this idea of wearing a mic and being mic'd up so you can actually hear the approach when I go up to the various groups. I still plan on doing that. However, right now in COVID, that's not the right time. Or even though we're coming out of it, we're still not out of the woods yet. There's still a lot of restrictions on performing. Uh, and I don't want any restrictions when I'm actually doing this. So what I want to do is I want to tell you that I'm going to do a follow-up video to this. And the follow-up video is basically going to be me approaching different groups of people in different environments 
uh, in restaurants, in weddings, out on the streets, in corporate events, to tables, to walk around groups. And I'm going to uh, be mic'd up so you can hear what I say. And then we'll do some commentary tracks over the top as well. So I can talk about why I'm saying what I'm saying and why it makes sense. I didn't want to hold off on that video because I know people keep asking me every week. People keep asking me for this video. So look at this as part one. This is the this is the um, the theory behind approaching people. It'll give you the information you need to start putting this together yourself. And when and I think by the summer I'll be able to get this up, if not before. Hopefully, you know, I'm filming this in June. By July, I'll be able to get that video done and up on the. Uh, up on, up on the um, YouTube channel, uh, but I will be doing a follow-up video where we'll be looking at live performance footage. Let me know if you want to see that down below, and also let me know if you've enjoyed this video and if it's been useful for you. I'd love to know. Outside of that, I just want to say thank you very much for again sitting down and watching one of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and I'm going to be back again tomorrow at, uh, I, I, well, I'm going to have three videos up tomorrow. There's going to be a rant at nine o'clock. There's going to be a magic live at six o'clock and there's going to be a short at two o'clock. So I'll see you for all of those videos. Once again, thanks very much for watching. You guys are amazing. I'll see you again. My name's Craig from Magic. TV.